Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about boundaries. So yesterday I was reading in the book of Ezekiel. We talked about our our daily communion meditation yesterday, talking about the waters were too deep, talking about that passage where Ezekiel is trying to cross the waters, it's ankle deep, then it's knee deep, waist deep, and then eventually it's too much to cross. As we were going through that passage, it just kind of stood out at me. At the end of that passage, as the the next paragraphs begin, just the word boundary, boundary or boundaries. It said boundaries for the land was just kind of jumping out at me. That concept of boundaries. One of the concepts God has shown me, and it's in our program, The Abundant Life Blueprint, is the concept of boundaries being related to order. If you look in the Old Testament, when God brought the people to the promised land. There were very defined boundaries. God spends a lot of time in the Old Testament talking about the boundaries of the land. And in order for us to create order in our lives, one of the first steps is creating boundaries. And I believe one of the most important things God has shown me to create a boundary around is our priorities. Creating a boundary around our priorities, creating a boundary in our heart, saying, you know what, these are my priorities. I'm going to stick with them in this order. For example, putting God first. We stick with these boundaries. Prioritizing people and relationships and family over work and money. Setting some boundaries in our heart. And we're going to be asking for God, asking God for help with that today. But let's pray. And then we'll go through our filters for today and get into our time of communion. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us be sensitive to those opportunities and make the most of them today. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's go through our filters for today. These filters are short things that I write at the top of my journal every night. As a way to help me stay in rhythm with God, to stay in step with him. And as a way to filter my decision making, give me some nudges back on track. Just in case I ever get off. I like to start with the big picture vision. For me, that's Abundant Life training centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. Our program, the Abundant Life Blueprint, started about 10 years ago when Proverbs 13, 22 changed the course of my life. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. But when I got started, I had no clue where to start. And so I began to seek after God. He was so faithful. He began to show up, began to teach me, began to train me. And he taught me this whole new way to live. 
But we make him the center. We make him the source. We learn how to rest and trust in him. We learn how to walk in the light as he is in the light. Now, learning how to walk in the light, walking in faith and love and humility and forgiveness, gratitude in all circumstances. It sounds great, but it wasn't always easy all the time. Had to break free of some old patterns and let go of some old ways and learn how to walk out this new way of living. And went through some struggles at times. I just began to document what I was learning and the things that I was going through. And it turned into a series of books and courses and blueprints and partners that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And the goal is to build abundant life training centers all over the world that are implementing these blueprints, thriving communities of people working together in unity, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. And then this year in 2022, our filter has been the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he's going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the entire world is their inheritance. And that's symbolic for us of this rich inheritance we have in Christ, this promised land. All of these promises that we have in Christ. And this year, God's been teaching us how to possess that land, how to walk in those promises and how to keep them. By filling up the basket of praise. We've talked about the example of two baskets on a balancing scale. On one side, you got a basket full of all the issues and problems. And we could fill it up with venting and complaining and pouting, toiling away in our mind, trying to figure it all out, stress, frustration. Or we could throw those problems in the basket. We could turn around. We could start filling up the basket of praise, praising God for who he is, that he's our healer. He's our provider. He's the God of all grace, the God of all hope, the God of all comfort. Nothing's impossible with him. We could praise him for all the promises that we have in Christ. Because for whatever problem we're facing, there's a promise for us. We can start praising him for that promise. We can start praising him for what he's done in our lives personally. And as we fill up that basket of praise, it helps us to walk in those promises and to keep them. And then this month in October of 2022, our filter has been understanding the times. In First Chronicles 12, it says the people of Issachar, they understood the times. And because of that, they knew what to do. They knew the best course of action for Israel to take. A, pro a principle we teach in our program is that understanding leads to knowledge. When you understand something, it helps you know what to do. As times are changing, things are shifting around, it helps us to know what to do. And the most important thing for us to understand, I believe, is God's grace. Colossians 1.6 says the gospel bears fruit in our lives. Ever since the day we understood God's grace. Understanding, we have this covenant of grace. Even when we were sinners, even when we missed it, we were enemies of God in our own mind, it says. God sent us his own son as a sacrifice for us. If he would do that, how would he not graciously and freely give us all things richly to enjoy? We get this mindset sometimes. That when we miss it, we fall short. That God gets mad at us. He's withholding things. He's given us the silent treatment. But the reality is he keeps giving us grace. He keeps doing good for us. And as we learn to receive that, it changes our hearts. It gives us the desire and the power to want to do the same for other people. To live the right way. His grace changes our hearts. Then we have to learn to let that flow through us to other people. Because other people sometimes will push our buttons or do things to wrong us. We have to learn how to give them that same grace. And then this week, as we go around the yearly cycle, Think of the yearly cycle as a circle of a year, like a 360 degree view of who God is and all that he's done for us in Christ. Different times of the year give us different glimpses of who God is. And right now we are in the end of October, getting into November. This is a time of year for transitions, I found, where God often begins to transition us into new things, to begin to open doors to new levels. Now, sometimes transitions can seem scary. But being willing to move forward, relying and trusting in him. If you got some transitions going on right now, you can rest assured as God working things for your good. It might look scary, but he's working it all out. And as we transition, I believe one of the most important things, when the people of Israel went into the promised land, they had to have the boundaries established. We got to establish some boundaries in our life. And I believe the most important thing to establish boundaries around what God has taught me, I believe 
is our priorities. So just taking some time. Think about what are my priorities in life? And we got to put a boundary around those. Put a boundary around those. We're going to make a commitment to walk in those boundaries. As a Heavenly Father, we are asking for your help. I feel like you're teaching us about boundaries today. Help us to establish boundaries in our lives the way that you say is best. To establish them and firm them up, to commit to them. We're asking for your help with that today. And whatever else you would want to teach us about boundaries. And we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take a moment to remember God sent us Jesus. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray and God laid upon him the sins and the iniquities of us all. And by his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed. He was destroyed by God, smitten by God, so that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight all through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and he seated him together in heavenly places with him. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And communion is supposed to be a celebration of our oneness with him, of our union with him. Think of communion, common union. We get a chance to remember and to celebrate that today. And so, Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us his fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today, connected with God in partnership with him. So Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. Let's talk about some application of boundaries into our health and fitness. Yes, we can have boundaries around what we eat, boundaries around getting exercise consistently and regularly. But I want to talk about today, one of the ways that our body is set up. For example, in your blood pressure in your blood sugar, different markers in your body. Your body has boundaries. It has an upper limit and a lower limit. For example, on your blood sugar, when the blood sugar begins to get too high, your body will begin to release hormones to sweep that excess blood sugar out of the system to get it back within the boundary. When the blood sugar gets too low, it will release opposite or different hormones to raise that blood sugar back up. And your body will regulate, it will keep it within those boundaries, but it's got signals set up. And so as I'm thinking about this, Heavenly Father, help us to have the right signals set up around these boundaries. In Jesus' name. But I hope it's been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.